Back in 2016, we were in Switzerland at the first ever Cybathlon. It's the world's only competition where people with physical disabilities compete using assistive devices and robotic technologies. This is the Olympics for bionic athletes. And the competitors, known as pilots, aren't just pushing their own abilities, but also technological boundaries. This serves as an important platform for research into assistive devices for everyday use. Over the last four years, the pilots and technology developers kept working to prepare for the 2020 Cybathlon. And in spite of the pandemic, the competition has gone ahead. However, instead of competing in Zurich's Swiss Arena, the 51 international teams participated in their home countries. Three, two, one. In six different disciplines, the pilots tackle tasks and obstacles, trying to get around courses in the shortest time whilst incurring the lowest number of penalties. The events were recorded and sent to the organisers in Zurich to be judged. Race, and we go straight to Seoul in uh, South Korea to look at Yonghun uh, Kim. Let's quickly go over to India. This is Team Viswajoti. They were then broadcast as if they were happening live, with the results kept secret until that moment. Owen Colomb, on the other hand, shows a perfect turn. He drives absolutely clean through corner four. And with the teams participating remotely, all the competitors needed to face exactly the same conditions. The first step is that we have a, a rule book which clearly defines not only the rules by which the tasks have to be completed, but also the dimensions uh, um, by, by which the tasks have to be set up. And of course, there had to be a way of ensuring everyone stuck to the rules. We recruited referees all over the world in the last months. We trained them also uh, via video conferences. We did small tests with them and now they are ready to judge on site the performance of the pilots. Each discipline challenged teams to solve everyday problems. Now again, over that rough terrain, all green... In the powered wheelchair race, competitors had to manoeuvre through confined spaces, over rough terrain and even upstairs. Bernhard Winter is one of the many tech developers who were inspired by the Cybathlon in 2016 to take their technology further. Started about six years ago. I wanted to do a student project. I had the idea to build a, a cool robot that could climb steps. At the same time, the Cybathlon was initiated. So the idea came, hey, we could put a seat on top. This is what we did. We, we built a wheelchair that could climb stairs. <laughs> Bernard and I have history. Here he is as a student at ETH Zurich, trying to rescue me from peril as his first prototype leaves me hanging. Um, Literally. Does this look as terrifying to you as it does to me? I'm not sure what it's going to happen right now. No, it doesn't work. It's, whoa, whoa. Then, tragically, in the 2016 competition, his machine failed to get off the starting grid. But now his company manufactures and sells his motorized wheelchairs and they do work. I can finally visit my neighbors next door because the two of them, they have uh, long stairs leading to their doors. And actually I haven't been in their homes for the last five years since my accident. So it's gay what I could for the first time visit them. Central to the Cybathlon is research into how these high-tech solutions can work in everyday life. Powered arm prosthetics are used to cut bread, screw in light bulbs and hang up washing. And exoskeletons are challenged with tasks like getting up from the sofa. Even technologies like brain-to-computer interfaces are being tested. The system detects brain signals and uses them to control an avatar in a virtual race. And in a cycling task for competitors with paraplegia, a complete or partial paralysis of the lower half of the body, a technique known as functional electrical stimulation is used to enable them to perform a pedaling movement on a recumbent bicycle. Back in 2016, we met Johnny Beer as he trained and competed in the 750 meter race. As technology has improved over the last four years, that distance has increased. 
but it still has to be covered in the same time of eight minutes. Three, two, one, go. Now the Cleveland team are the team to beat. And this is a gentleman who's looking to turn the tables. Johnny Beer. In 2016, I got four minutes, eight seconds. Beer is so close yeah. with, oh, and it is Beer. The Imperial Burkle team takes silver medal. Today, I've got two minutes, 57 seconds, but for 1,200 meters. So um, technically I'm like 100% faster. Every sub-athlon there is, the technology is gonna get better. And that's a good thing for disabled people. Some competitors even turned their living rooms into makeshift TV studios with cameras linking back to Zurich, screens with countdowns, and even cheering supporters. And there is the closure of the door. Whilst it is a competition, Cybathlon is first and foremost a place for collaboration, technological development, inclusion, and a showcase for what is needed by people with disabilities.